Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today I figured out the Stable Diffusion Comfy UI just plays like a game. A photographer friend asked me to try and create a image generation AI that would be capable of continuing one of her photo series way back that would have otherwise been too expensive to continue the regular way. Basically one man together with an animal, but the man is just nonchalantly looking at the camera while the animal is trying to in some way or the other make contact. Wouldn't want to be this guy though. You can see they are shot in a particular style, pretty dark and contrast heavy. And there's always a different kind of animal trying to make contact with the human. The photo series is named You Do Not Listen with different faces and animals. I'm not yet sure we're going to be capable of accomplishing this. This is a very difficult task to begin with, but I just wanted to show off how fun this implementation of Stable Diffusion really is. First things first, I would like to know how the AI interprets these photos so I have a better idea what my prompt should contain to get a similar outcome. To do that, I'm going to be using the tagger node, placing that right here. And all we have to do is hook up the image node right here, decide which model we want to use. I'm going to set the replace underscore to true. And that is all. We can go ahead and queue up a prompt in order to see what is happening here. Now, this is the description of the image right here, according to the AI. I can now go ahead and add one of these taggers to each of the images and basically extract the terms that are overlapping with a lot of these images. Said and done, all the images have a tagger. We're just going to go ahead and let this run through. And now we can go ahead, check for some common tags such as solo or looking at viewer. I'm going to go ahead and prepare a bunch of prompt text notes. The first one I'm going to name description or cheap, basically just describing the person or what's inside the picture. The second one is going to be the technical aspects or L as it is called in the SDXL workflow. We're going to be needing a third prompt and this one here I'm just going to call negative. Inside the description, I'm going to copy over some of the common tags that I've seen here. I'm also going to include things like simple background or black background. On the other side, tags like realistic will be going into the technical section. And then on the negative side, we can add stuff like blurry or whatever we can come up with that we don't want to see inside the picture. Now that I've completed the step, I removed all of the taggers and this is what I ended up with. The first line here basically describes the person that I want to see. Everything else is going to be standard to each picture. I also added some more technical and negative terms, but this is going to expand. All of these prompts are going to be adjusted as needed. So we'll be getting consistently good results. The next step is going to be to add a checkpoint. I'm going to be using the Chuggernaut XL checkpoint. I made sure to have a checkpoint with the way already integrated. This basically gives a model that is responsible to generate the image, a clip that translates text into something that the model can understand, and then also a way that can decode and encode a image from latent to pixel space, latent basically meaning something the computer can understand and pick Pixel meaning something that can be displayed on the screen. To generate a image, we're going to need a case sampler and I'm going to be using the advanced one so we can take full advantage of the SDXL model. The case sampler comes with inputs for the model, positive, negative prompts and the latent image. We could just go ahead and create an empty latent image with the specified dimensions, but I'm going to be taking advantage of the SDXL aspect ratio nodes that I have. This also creates an empty latent, but we can just choose a aspect ratio. It is best to to do a 1 by 1 square 1024 by 1024 since this is the aspect ratio most models have been trained on. Now our prompt will have to be converted into something the case sampler can understand which is a condition. With the SDXL model I'm going to be using the clip text encode SDXL. Instead of writing the description and the technical aspects directly into this node, I'm going to be converting that. So convert text G to input. And I'm going to be doing the same thing with the L. So now we can just take our prompts and actually connect them. I'm also going to be changing the size here a little bit in order to provide more detail. But the image is still going to end up 1024 by 1024. From my load checkpoint node, I can then connect the model. I can also connect the clip. So 
the conditioning can be formatted for the model and this would be our positive conditioning. Now I'm going to be copying this over for the negative and I'm just going to be combining both of these nodes together. We could have done this with the upper portion as well. It does work if you have everything in just one prompt and then connect it to G and L respectively, but why not have it separated, having everything a little bit more organized. So this would be our negative condition right here. Now all we need is the latent image that I have right here. So let's bring this over maybe, connect the latent image, which at the moment right here is blank. But as soon as we run it through the case sampler, together with our prompt, it will be creating an image. To keep everything a little bit more streamlined, I'm going to be rerouting most of the nodes, such as the clip and the model, so we can use it later in the workflow without the nodes going everywhere. I'm also going to text concatenate my prompts right here, the description G and the technical L, since we'll be needing those again in the refining process. So I'm going to continue the model node right there, bring this down and it's clear which line actually goes where. Well, at least a little bit. After running everything through the case sampler, we end up with another latent image. For now, we're just going to have a look at that. We're going to be using a V decode node, which we have to hook up to this guy here. And then we can go ahead and set up a preview image. Now, I don't expect too much yet from that, but let's just go ahead and create a random image with the parameters we have set up so far and uh, there it is okay well it's not actually as horrible as i was expecting it but it is not really the right composition so i don't want this to be luck based i want this to be a reliable tool to create these images and the first problem i notice is how are we gonna get the human to be in this pose with the upper body visible and everything Sure, we could go inside the tags and maybe emphasize upper body with control and the up arrow. This would make it more important in the prompt, but this is not good enough for me. So my next step is going to be to check for open pose and we have a preprocessor for that. We can take an image, for instance, this one here, which has probably the most neutral pose here that I want to see just looking straight at the camera with the arms not doing anything weird. So I'm going to be connecting that to the open pose node, maybe change the resolution to 1024. I don't want to detect any hands. I don't want to detect the face either. I just want to detect the body. And here we have the open pose. This is basically the eyes and then we have the shoulders, the arms. So this is what we want the pose to always be. To do that, we're going to control net apply advanced. And this node basically goes in between the conditioning and the case sampler. So we bring everything slightly over, bring this in here. And the conditioning is first going to go into the apply control net node and afterwards into the case sampler, just like that. So it goes straight through. I can move my aspect ratio right over here, the initial latent image. To complete this node, I'm still going to be needing a control net model. Let's go ahead and load up a control net model. I already happen to have the open pose XL loaded, which is exactly what we need. And then finally, we're going to be needing the image. And by image, we mean the open pose image right there. I'm going to add a little reroute for this image right there. And this way I can make sure to know where this node actually runs and we still have the preview image of the open pose right there. And now that we have this set up, what we should be seeing is exactly this pose. Now I think what throws this image off is the one boy thing. We're going to be removing that because we already kind of indicate what we want inside the first line. So now we get an older guy with white short hair and tattoos approximately in the pose we want. What we can do now is play around with the strength here of the control net. And I would say I want to have a strength of one, but I want to stop influencing the image at 0.5 so at 50% of the creation, which is going to give the model a little bit more freedom. Now let's make this guy a little bit older, 80 years old man. There, and now I'm much closer to what I initially wanted. Let's get to the second phase and that is actually refining the image. So what I want to do is maybe set the seed to something fixed. I'm going to be increasing the steps to 30 steps. I also want to change the sampler to DPM++ to M and the scheduler to Keras. We're 
We're gonna start the creation at step zero of 30, but we're gonna be ending it at 25, so a little bit early. And we also wanna enable return with leftover noise. We're gonna have a little bit of noise that we can work with in the refiner phase. The refiner phase is basically the same thing, another advanced case sampler, but instead of the normal clip text encode, we're gonna be using the refiner. This one is a little bit simpler, but we also wanna convert the text to input and we're gonna be having one for the positive and one for the negative prompt. Now the refiner model is a different model. We cannot just use a normal SDXL model, but we're gonna be using the refiner model. So we're gonna be converting with this model's clip. And then of course the model will be continuing right here into the second case sampler. Now for this one here, we don't wanna enable to add noise because we already come with the noise that we want. We're gonna be using the same amount of steps because that is the same process, but we're gonna be starting at step 25 and ending things at step 30. And then we don't wanna end up with leftover noise. This should be mostly the final image for this phase. So here we have our conditioning like so and then the latent image of course is the one with the leftover noise we're going to be rerouting that over here and trying the case sampler Something else I want to have greater control over is the actual seed that's being used. Right now, let's just go with seed 1 and we're going to keep it fixed and we're just going to be replacing that for the first case sampler. So convert that noise seed to a input and we can go ahead and connect it. Now we just have to change it here and we're going to keep it fixed for the other case sampler. So we can see before refining and after refining right there. I totally forgot to hook up my prompts, but you can already see this is the image with the noise still intact so we can refine it. But I want to continue my prompts right here. So we're going to be rerouting that over there and adding that to my positive prompt. And then my negative prompt is going to be right here. We can also add a reroute. I'm going to be sorting this out a little bit better in just a moment, but add that right here. Now we can go ahead and try this generation again. And it is now in the refining phase. Here we go. Let's try a 25 years old man, maybe a little bit jobby. Gonna do red short hair and blue eyes. Okay, interesting. I think we're close to what I want to see. Don't worry, this is not gonna be the final image yet. We just want to get a basic composition and the image is still completely gonna change. One thing I noticed, the background is not good enough. We're just gonna stick with black background and I'm gonna emphasize this to maybe 1.25. I'm gonna try a brown brown-eyed, bold, wrinkly Asian man now. There it is, not too shabby. There is already quite a bit of detail. It doesn't look extremely realistic, but I think we are gonna achieve that with the second pass. Okay, I took myself the liberty of organizing the chart a little bit better. Blue is now everything that we load in, such as the checkpoints or the images. Green and red would be the positive and negative prompt respectively. Black is just some in-between processing node. Purple would be my most important settings, that I can tweak and then yellow as our outputs. I experimented a little bit around with the G and L texts and I figured it is just the best or the easiest if you're not an absolute prompt master to just have everything in one prompt. So instead of this being the description, it is just gonna be the positive prompt. And then it goes both into the text G and text L for the SDXL encoder. Currently we have an old Asian wrinkled man with a bald head. Sometimes the bald works, sometimes it doesn't. But as you can see, we've got our noise image and then the finalized image with the sampler. And there's still a lot wrong with this image. Apart from the eyes being extremely creepy, also the skin doesn't look extremely natural. It almost looks like a realistic 3D model. We're now gonna fix that with the second pass. All we need is another sampler. This time around, I'm gonna go with a normal case sampler. This one here doesn't add noise, but you can still denoise the incoming picture. So our picture would be the latent image. So the second one we generated, we're gonna stick with a fixed seed. I'm just gonna choose one. I'm gonna go up to 30 steps again, keep the CFG at eight, and then go back to the same samplers I used before. I don't wanna completely denoise the picture, otherwise we're gonna get something completely different, it can be a little bit different because the mistakes that we have in this picture need to be fixed. 
I already prepared a reroute node for my model. So this can go right here and it's just coming from the first model that we loaded. Instead of taking the same positive prompt as we have, I'm actually going to create a new prompt for this image. And I'm going to do that automatically by taking the image and then adding a tagger. We want to replace the underscores and then the string can go directly into the positive, though we still need to encode it with a clip text SDXL encoder. So this would be my text G and text L. We're going to bring this into the positive conditioning and we also need a negative one. The negative we can take from our previous prompt. So everything we have in this is continuing on the top there. It is this one right here, which goes into this text G and text L. Then I just need the clip, which I also got from the first model. So we can translate the text for the model. This would then be our negative. And finally, all we have to do is convert the image again to see a preview which requires the way that I also got. Now just to test things out before we start to sort it let's preview that image and see what changes actually occur and comparing it to the previous one. All right here we go it has been generated let me just bring this over a little bit and we can see that a lot of the stuff that has been looking unrealistic has been fixed. We also lost a little bit of detail but for realism I would say like the skin does look much more realistic not as plastic. Also the eyes have been moved mostly fixed. If you look closely, there are still some mistakes like the iris is not completely round. But before we get to the final image, there will still be a lot of adjustments. And I would say so far, this is actually not too shabby. We're gonna try a different Asian man right there. This image is already much better than the previous one. And looking at the final result, come on, there we go. Now, this is actually much more believable. Yeah, all right. I think after some prompt adjustment, we can even get better results. So let me just clean this chart up a little bit, but we basically are done with the first process to get this image. And now we would be interested in actually also getting an animal inside the picture. I'm gonna get started with another workflow. Firstly, copying the image that we got as a result, and we're gonna paste that into a load image node with the clip space. So this is now my starting picture and I would like to get an animal in there. We're going to start with a simple example such as a horse head. So something similar to what we can see here. To do that, we're going to need another case sampler. I'm not sure if the advanced is actually necessary. Maybe let's try with both. And we also want to prepare the picture for inpaint. So if I just search for inpaint, the way and code for inpainting is what we need. We're going to require the image right here, then a way. That also means we need to load another checkpoint. Since we're trying to add something to the picture, ergo we are inpainting, we should also go with an inpaint model. I got the Excel chucker knob but maybe a 1.5 model is going to turn out better in the end. We'll see. Either way, we now have access to the V and we also have access to the mask right here. Now, the mask, of course, is still something we'll have to do. So if we open this in the mask editor and kind of imagine the horse head coming in here from the right side, I'm just trying to cut off a little bit of the man here. So we could have an overlap of the horse. And of course, also the horse should be able to cast a shadow on the shoulder there. The way we paint the mask is going to be very crucial as to how the animal actually gets painted in. So we might have to try with various masks first. Now that we prepared the picture, we can simply put it into the latent image slot of the sampler. I'm going to try both the advanced and the normal case sampler just to see whether or not we do need the add noise functionality or not. By the way, we're also going to need a positive and negative prompt. And even though I'm using a SDXL model, I'm just going to use the normal clip text encode that we can use the clip from here. This would be my positive and I'm also going to go with a negative prompt right there. For the negative, I'm just going to set it to blurry for now. This is going to be expanded and for the positive prompt, we're going to use horse head, maybe side view and then we'll see if we have to add more stuff to make it more reliable in the generation. Let's also connect these to the normal case sampler just to see whether or not that is going to work and then we also need to connect the model right there. Okay. For now, I'm just going to go with a fixed seat for both of them. So we can kind of compare what they're doing. We're going to do 30 steps. And I think this time around, I'm going to try the DPM plus plus three M S D E sampler with the Keras scheduler. Good. And just like that, we should end up with an image right now. It is in latent space, so we'll have to convert it. And I'm going to do the same thing with the normal case sampler, just to see whether or not there is a difference. Okay. We did get some horse hairs in the joint and looking at both of 
of the outputs, this is pretty much similar. So it doesn't look like any other noise gets added and therefore we don't really need the advanced sampler. Okay, good to know. Now we have to figure out how we can consistently get some horse heads in the joint without too much hassle. And I would say we'll have to play around with the prompt a little bit and maybe with the mask. And it could even be that we have to play around with the in-paint model that we're using. So I think I'm gonna change the seed input so I have a little bit of a control here. And we're just gonna start at seed one with an increment. So every time I generate something, then the seed number should go up by one and I can go through the pictures a little bit to see whether or not something is working. Now looking at this, I think there should be more focus on my prompt, like the horse head should be a given, even if it is kind of strange. So I'm putting the CFG value a little bit lower. The lower it gets, the more it is gonna revise your prompt and the higher it gets, the more freedom the model will have. Gonna change the prompt to horse head from the side looking at human. Oh, there it is. We already got our first horse in here. Now it's still looking into the wrong direction. Let me just find a good image. Right now we are at seed 10. Okay, <laughs> it is still a little bit too luck based for my taste. I'm not getting the horse head consistently in like 20 seats. I only got two horses that were realistic enough to even be considered. So now what we could do is for instance, emphasize the horse head to maybe 1.3. So it really gets considered here. Or maybe we could also set up an XY plot in order to test out a whole bunch of seats and schedulers. Like this scheduler could be very important and give me a completely different outcome. Let's see what happens if we set some emphasis on the horse. Is the horse going to be forced a little bit more? Ah, okay, the third seat already gave me a horse that is much better. Now this uh, head is still a little bit too small, I think. Ah, check this out. So we're slowly getting there. That's already like the third horse head in a couple of seats. Now, of course, if we zoom in, there's still a lot of visibility from the mask that we had. Like right here is the border. But all we have to do for this is something similar to what we did on the top, namely a second pass. So imagine we end up with this image here and we want to still fix the mistakes. This is naturally something we can do right here. Like the eye doesn't look natural. There's something wrong with the mouth and probably this is probably not right. Now I think another thing we can do to give this a little bit more context is grow the mask by let's say 64 pixels, which I think is the maximum. And this basically considers a little bit of the outside of the mask in terms of what would actually fit in the in-painting area. Alrighty, I experimented around a little bit and I figured that I had to set a clip skip in between the checkpoint loader and the text encode. This is gonna change how the model actually clips the prompts and has a vastly different outcome. For instance, at clip skip minus one, I will be getting this picture here, which is absolutely useless. But if I use clip skip minus two, then something interesting happens. Namely, we do get a horse. Let's check it out. Come on, come on, boots, boots, boots. There we go. Usually it's something between minus one to minus three. Minus two seems to be working quite well for this. I also added a number here in the clip text encode and I actually don't know what it is called in English, the horse harness. I'm trying to get rid of it. So I just get the horse head, but this is not really the picture we want in the end. It's just for testing purposes. So I'm not gonna be focusing on that. The reason I have the number one in here inside the negative prompt, it is not gonna have a catastrophical outcome. But what I can do, as soon as I like a picture, I can just change the number and I will be getting a slight variation of the current picture and not something completely different. And there we go. You can see just very slight differences. So if you're almost happy, this can be used. However, now let's go through a couple of seats until there is one that I actually like. And hopefully with the clip skip now, we will be getting more consistent horse heads. Of course, it's still not working all the time. We'll have to go through a couple of seats, but usually within 10 seats, I now get a decent amount of horse heads. Apparently not all of them are usable, but you know, we're getting there. I decided to go with a 2M Kara sampler and a CFG of about six. This might still be subject to change. I noticed something. If I use a node called set latent noise mask right here and just put that in between. So instead of the latents directly going to the sampler, we're first running it through the set latent noise mask. Then I have a much higher chance of generating the type of horse that I want to see. It also comes with some negative things like the line right here is much more visible, but after actually going over it with a second pass, this line will be completely gone. We might even be able to fix it now swapping again with the 
samplers. So say we try a normal Euler sampler. Let's go back to seed one and see what happens then. Ah, no, the line is still clearly visible. Yeah, but the noise mask definitely helps generating horses even if they are not always facing the direction I want. But I noticed we're consistently getting the type of horse that I want. I just feel like this head is way too small. We might have to adjust that through the prompt. But you get the basic gist. I think we're ready to move on to the next step which is going to be to adjust the lighting and swap the background. And then finally, we want to upscale the image and crop it to the correct aspect ratio. All right, I got my seed 24. I did skip a whole bunch of numbers between 10 and 20. So it didn't take me 24 tries to get this outcome. And still, it is not perfect, but it should get a little bit better with the second pass. And I'm also still going to try to find some settings so I don't tend to get this line here. But in the end, it doesn't matter because now we're going to take this picture and we're going to run it through the same process as we did on the top so I'm actually gonna skip that for you it's basically just the second pass that we're doing now so going from the image that wasn't really realistic to the image that was realistic and also corrected the eyes and other mistakes and we will be able to correct stuff here as well like if we get too many nostrils or some weird anatomy this should all be fixed and of course also the harsh in painting line will be fixed Okay, said and done, I added a section right here that basically is the same thing as we did in the last step previously and now I end up with a picture without the harsh line. It is still not perfect but we will be perfecting it as we upscale it. I added a positive prompt in order to not lose certain features. For instance the Asian aspect got lost a little bit as the model was rearranging the pixels. I think I had to go with a lower step count than 30 because it was messing up the picture a little bit or maybe it didn't. Uh, yeah I think because our picture wasn't noisy. Lower step steps are actually better in this case. Like right now this is just with 10 steps and I think this is a little bit more detailed what I want to see. If I do one with 20 steps then we might be losing a little bit of detail. Actually I cannot really tell but 20 steps is enough for this process. Good now the only thing that's left to do is change the background to be extremely black and then of course upscale and crop it. Let's take care of that. Because it is very similar to something we already did, I took myself the liberty of finishing the next step, exchanging the background. It is basically the same thing as we did with the in painting here. However, there's one more node, a person mask generator that I downloaded from the manager and we're basically automatically detecting the background and making a mask with it with a confidence of 0.4, which is the standard. So if we go ahead and actually do that, maybe we are gonna skip the notes right there for now and we're just gonna go ahead and let this run we can see how the mask has been done which is pretty much what I wanted to see so now we can enable this I simply set a neutral black background instead of the horse thing here and I added gradient to the negative prompt for this one I had the most luck with a very high CFG value and then the LCM and simple sampler slash scheduler. Everything else is the exact same thing as we did with the other in painting. So let's go ahead and check out what we get. And there it is. Wonderful. Look at that. A very black background. I love it. It is the same style as we have here. There's still some things we might have to do with the lighting but right now this picture here I'm really happy with it. Okay, here we go. Let's get to the last step, which is just upscaling the image, making it much more detailed. Right now, a lot is blurry. There are still some mistakes. Some of the mistakes we should have tried with more seeds, like the double nostrils here. I don't think this will be fixed in this step, but that is not the point. Of course, once we start to generate the images on a serious basis, we try a couple more seeds until we get a better horse. Since I'm going to be working with the same model and everything, I already took myself the liberty of rerouting the model, the way, the positive and negative conditioning. And now all we need is a node called ultimate SD upscale. For now, I want to set the seed to one and we keep it fixed. I only want to have about 10 steps because we come from a very good image. The CFG value I'm going to set to, I think about four. The sampler is the plus plus 2M Keras. And then we go with the denoise value of 0 0.5. So I'm going to change the picture significantly. I'm going to choose the chess upscale type. It basically tiles the image and then just upscales a little portion of it instead of the whole image in one go. The tile width I'm going to set
set to 1024 and then I think everything else can remain the standard. Let's go ahead and hook everything up. First of all, the image, we got the model, the positive and negative prompts. We got the they, and we also have to choose a upscale model, which in this case is gonna be the four times ultra sharp. There are still a couple of other upscalers we could try. For this video's purpose, I think we should be good. Let me just get that preview image right next to the first one so we can compare. And yeah, I guess we're already ready. Let's just go ahead and do this. Now, as you can see, it is going through that phase a couple of times, basically scaling up each tile individually. And here we go. We can see it is not exactly the same person, but it is now a lot more detailed. We can even see some skin details here. If I just compare it to the first phase, you can see everything is a little bit blurry. And right here, it's already much clearer. This image is now 2048 by 2048 which is not quite enough for my taste I would like to go one step further so we'll have to run it through another iteration but you can see even though it fixed some of the other stuff and also the horse hair is significantly better the nostril is not gonna get fixed in this step unless we choose a really high denoise value which is then gonna get away too much from the original image so let's say we were happy with this image I'm gonna copy that to my clip space oh actually let's make a different process because we probably need different settings now. I've never tested actually scaling up the image to 4096. That is going to be interesting. But this is the first step. We now have a much, much better picture. I mean, just also look at the differences here in the skin detail contrary to this one. This is just all blurry and not really usable. So in this case, I would say we're gonna copy the upscaler and then just try to replicate the step again. See what we get. Thankfully, because we have a fixed seat, it's not gonna go through the first upscaling phase anymore. But because the image here is double the size, we'll have to do double the tiles as well, or even quadruple the tiles. So this process is definitely gonna take a while and we probably don't have the optimal settings yet. Here we go. Definitely not the optimal settings. We can uh, clearly see something went wrong here with the tiling, but just look at the details now. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. I mean, sure, it is not the same person. Of course, you cannot use it to upscale something and keep it the same. However, we can get a basic composition that isn't very sharp, but easy to generate. And then we just upscale, allowing the model some creativity. Now, right here, I'm not sure what went wrong. Maybe we have a too high CFG value. I'm gonna try CFG2 and run this again. I guess I get to test a few things out now. We can also play around with the denoise value, though this also gives the model less freedom. But you know, all of these things are now worth a try and I'm gonna be right back once I figured out some settings that I like and then we crop the image and we're basically done. Maybe we try a couple of different people and animals as well, just to give the workflow a little bit of a test. Okay, here we go. It was basically the denoise value that I set to 0.3 instead. And now we don't get these weird mistakes, at least not noticeably. I still kind of see them right here. So maybe that is something I'm still gonna fine tune. But my point is here we have the original. We should have a sharp image about at this distance here where we can still see the individual pores. It looks like this guy was freezing cold or maybe he also was a little bit scared of the spider. Either way, as we get closer everything is blurry but we can still make out each of the individual hairs we can see each of the lines and the wrinkles and the same thing here on my test image we can see all the wrinkles the lines the pores some of it is not quite realistic yet but that is something i'm gonna fine tune i don't want to spend like hours now but i will be working on that a little bit more and we can see as we get closer we can also make out each of the individual hairs now the nipples admittedly don't look great and i'm sorry you had to look at them the entirety of the video but now let's produce a couple of other images in order to put this workflow a little bit to the test. This time around I decided to go for a young bearded man with chest hair thin brown red hair. Let's see what we got. 
right here. The ninth seat that I tested, there were a couple of other good ones and I also adjusted the prompt a little bit here with the added details that I want for the positive and negative prompts. Now I also made sure to reroute my prompts so I can use them all over the project. So everywhere I'm using the SDXL model, I'm now also using the same prompts and I don't have to repeat them all over again. I only have to do the animal still of course and the background right here is separate. But other than that, I only have to adjust the prompts right here. So whatever I set here is then gonna continue through the rest of the project. Now, of course, we can be a little bit more fiddly with the choice. Also the lighting, we need to be careful that the lighting is at least similar. I think we then still have to desaturate it and maybe add a little bit of contrast to get the very same effect. But that would probably easier be done in a program like GIMP or Photoshop. Either way, let's now continue to the next workflow. I'm just gonna copy this over now. So we're working with that image. And I think what I want to see for this one is a crab on the shoulder, kind of looking at him. So let's open that in the mask editor and we're gonna make some space for that crap. Now we have to change that to crap looking at human side view. Maybe I'm gonna change some of that, but let's just go ahead and test it out. Okay, I had to adjust the mask a little bit. I was getting like huge craps and this one here is not too bad. It is like the fifth seat. Now it is really bad because there are no shadows and nothing, but at least it is kind of doing what I wanted it to do. So I'm just gonna run it through this process here once and see what happens with the crab. Maybe it starts to look a little bit more like, oh no, never mind. Oh, that's actually interesting. So crap doesn't seem to be in the repertoire of this particular model. I don't know. It just spawned in a crap, but it never interacted with the human. And as soon as I tried a squirrel, this is like the first generation with a squirrel, the squirrel is already correctly interacting with the human. Well, at least sitting on it. I want it to interact even more, but maybe there is a limitation or we would have to find other models that are fine tuned to animals. But look at this, the next generation even is also correctly interacting with the shoulder here and also casting a shadow. So I'm not sure what's up with the crap. Though this one here is really funny. <laughs> okay, I think I have to bypass the set latent noise mask. Otherwise we get those harsh surroundings here, this border, and I cannot really efficiently get rid of it without changing the image completely. Nice, that's much more like it. We're gonna copy that, send it through the refining process. I'm still trying to find the best settings like right now I feel this has been integrated well but the chest hair changed too dramatically you know but this is all details I just want to wrap up the video now by showing you a couple of examples so this is now the picture we want to scale up the animal is not really interacting with the human maybe I wasn't patient enough for that Hmm. Let me try again. I only tried like 10 seats with the scroll and we get some nice poses. I have to say, come on, give me something good. Okay. I found an interaction that I like much better. And then cropping out the background, we can see there are some mistakes. Also with the hair, I really don't like that. That could be because of the simple scheduler here. Okay. Interestingly enough, I only had to try a couple of different seats before already getting a better outcome. But as I mentioned, the last step is probably gonna be to take it into GIMP and then finish editing it. I might even crop it there because it is just simpler. Now we would be continuing to the very last step and that is upscaling it. So let me paste that in here and we're just gonna let it run through the process. I see you in a minute. Okay, not too shabby. We still have the horse picture here and I should have taken myself a little bit more time with the squirrel here. But for demonstration purposes, this is gonna be fine. We're just waiting on a few more tasks to be generated. And there it is, the final image. Now this guy looks a little bit too serious and a little bit too beautiful for the process. We want to see more skin imperfections, but look at the squirrel. Like the detail here in the hair and everything is actually not too shabby. This still doesn't look too realistic. So I will have to tweak some settings, but we can even see the individual lip wrinkles and all of the hair right here, the chest hair. I'm pretty happy. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and run this process with a couple more ideas and I'm just gonna present you with the results. But with that out of the way, I really hope you enjoyed this introduction into Comfy UI and what you could accomplish with it. For me, it's just as fun as playing one of these coding games, those visual coding games. 
And it's just fun to go after a concrete idea and try to come up with a workflow that works for it. But with that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed the pictures. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye bye.